What have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> I'm thinking this is all a mistake. First reactions or feelings after this is that I feel like we should have hired someone. Will this be <laughs> as far as we get? Will this be the death of Pivot? Maybe. <laughs> Elliot and Jen, a saw and a hammer. Oh my God. And a dream. That's a theory anyway. We'll see if it actually works. Our decks are soft. Jane, can you pass me the moisture meter? Now these things aren't the most reliable, but hardwood is supposed to have a moisture rating of up to 35%. So here, we're gonna begin the process of recoring our decks. And I'd like to tell you, I know exactly what I'm doing, but this is gonna be even the first time that I'm using a circular saw. Now I have done a ton of research, however, and my, maybe it's my boat motto is nothing to it but to do it. So why don't we just get started? Now, as long as we don't make any mistakes that are painful or expensive, it'll be all right. All right, let me show you the project plan before we dive in. Now the basic makeup of our deck is a layer of fiberglass, a layer of wood coring, and then a bottom layer of fiberglass. And so this project will be to effectively Take the top layer off, replace the core, and put the top, top layer back on. And so we're breaking it up into basically four distinct phases. The first phase is going to be removing the top layer of fiberglass and scraping off the wood that's attached to the fiberglass and cleaning out the entire wood of the core. Then the second phase is going to be to lay down a layer of fiberglass to bolster the bottom layer of fiberglass and then add new coring. Then the third layer is going to be reattaching the top layer of fiberglass and connecting the fiberglass to the hole and to the deck. And then the last step will be fairing the surface and painting new non-skid. So to add another layer of complexity onto this project, we are in Southern Maryland, which is along the Chesapeake and it is September. Fiberglass does best when it sets at 70 degrees or higher. So we are in a bit of a time crunch. So we gotta get going. The goal of today is to cut through the first layer of deck so that way we can remove it and identify the width or the thickness of that layer of wood coring. And that way we can purchase the uh, marine grade plywood to replace it. But without further ado, let's get going. Our test section is going to be a three foot section and then we're leaving about three inches, depending upon kind of ish on the side so that way we can join the fiberglass together. It's all an experiment, so we're gonna to try to keep it in a small section and uh, go from there. Watch your fingers. That's just so powerful, it's just amazing. All right. <laughs> like my heart. All right, let's keep going. Right. What have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> I'm thinking this is all a mistake. All right, so the circular saw has done well on our long portions. It just doesn't feel right, especially for these short sections. Like the, the section is basically the width of the whole blade. Um, and so we're gonna go back to the drawing board and look for the right tool. This might be the right tool and we're just inexperienced, but more likely we need a different tool. And that's okay, that's part of the process. We're learning. I have a small Dremel on board, so I'm gonna try to, to see if I can just get the board up with that. But if not, we're just gonna order the tool and we'll be back. All right, I have my Dremel and let's see if this will do it. Purely a test of, actually, I don't have any clue. Ollie, can you please remove yourself from the working area? You don't have your safety equipment on. Please put your PPE on. Well, I think I've cut a section out. This is definitely 
not the most ideal tool, but I think it did it. I think I cut deep enough, so let's see. I really hope we're doing the right thing. That is the beginning. This is why it was hard because some like the previous owner looks like this is just a drill of epoxy right here. Gotcha. Um, that was glued in. Yeah, this is rot. That right there is the foam above the uh, headliner in the aft cabin, and so you can just see. For some reason, and obviously it's discolored, so there was water getting in there. This is not the, the worst section of the, the deck. This is just the, the section we started. We decided to start first. But you can tell, like this wood has been soaked and then dried and then soaked. Um, especially right here, you can tell uh, it just crumbles. Um, yeah, not a lot of support left. First reactions or feelings after this is that I feel like we should have hired someone to do this project. However, hiring someone would have cost us probably $15,000. That was not really an option for us. So yeah, just feeling very overwhelmed and very underqualified. Yay. Now we're gonna see, let's see what we feel like after it's done. Will he finish? <laughs> I don't know. Will this be will, as far as we get? Will this be the death of Pivot? Maybe. Elliot and Jen, a saw and a hammer. Oh my god. And a dream. Oh my god. Or is it a nightmare? It's a nightmare. We have a layer of the upper fiberglass off. And you can see actually how thick it was. Um, maybe, was that quarter inch? It's pretty thick. Um, Top fiberglass? Yeah, what would you say that is? A quarter inch? Uh, maybe, maybe an eighth. I don't know. Well, an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Pretty thick. Um, that is the reason why we're keeping the top fiberglass, by the way, because otherwise we would need to relay that. Um, and that's a lot of fiberglass, a lot of work, and a lot of time, a lot of material costs, too. So now um, we're going to get rid of this wood and figure out how thick the core is. And it actually doesn't look that thick. I mean, it doesn't look more than a quarter inch. It's very thin. It's surprising. I thought it would. I was expecting it to be like three quarter inch. So it looks like the top layer of fiberglass is a quarter inch, and the interior wood coring is about half an inch. So time to buy wood. Mission accomplished. I don't know if this is accomplished or not. <laughs> Feeling pretty defeated. And I feel like I need a shower. I think it might be time for dinner. Yeah. With that, we will see you guys tomorrow, manana, the next day, who knows, the next day we're out here uh, ripping the wood off and putting in the labor. So we ordered all the tools that we think we're gonna need for the next phase, um, but we're still having some problems finding the coring material, um, the half inch of marine plywood. And so I'm just spending my time basically uh, etching away all of this dry rot and prepping this area because we're gonna be doing a fiberglass patchwork. So we ordered a multi-tool and hopefully that'll help us cut uh, into the decks further, but I'm still working on our piece that we cut open and I need to basically clean off the bottom and the top layer so that way I can A, fix the bottom layer because there's a big hole in it and then B, so that way it'll be nice and clean for a good bonding when I put it back together. I've sanded away most of the bottom layer of fiberglass and now I'm going to grind away where that hole is because we need to fill it with fiberglass. Gotta do the job right.
Wow, babe, that looks great. What? That looks great. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, good job. I'm gonna be grinding this down, all of this down. So I'm using a grinder for this, and this is the first time I'm using this tool as well. But it's coming along pretty well. I got my PPE on, so that's always good. And eye protection. And eye protection. All right, so I grinded off the area that we had the big hole in it, and the strategy that I read about is that you basically track the cracks and you grind out a little bit further. So that way when you lay the fiberglass, you know, it has a nice bevel to it and it'll get all the affected area instead of just the one that you see. Um, so it was some, sort of challenging because the grinder that we have is kind of big and this is kind of a small surface, but I think I did a pretty good job. Um, it was bigger than just this area and it turned out that this area was pretty, pretty slim. We got the whole area and then kind of worked its way up a little bit to this other part of the deck that was pretty thin. All right, so I've cut out my pieces of fiberglass, getting bigger each time, three layers. Um, I sort of miscut, not the best at measuring and cutting. So I had to cut again a bigger piece. So for the record, I think this is maybe too much fiberglass, but we're just gonna, this is the first time ever working with fiberglass. So let's see how it goes. We're using epoxy resin for this uh, because it's supposed to be a good bonder. And uh, now I'm mixing up equal parts ratio. Well, not equal parts, but equal pumps, I guess you would say. Now I need to get out the air bubbles. And that's what this little thin roller is for. Well, I think that went pretty smooth. I think I've learned some things from next time. Maybe more particular about building out the fiberglass in smaller sections. So I think that divot still a little, there's a little bit of a concave there. Um, but about the amount of epoxy, I think it's pretty good. And yeah, now we're gonna let this set up. It should take a few hours for us to see it kind of harden. It's, pr it's a pretty good day today, pretty warm. And let's take it from there. Well, it's later in the day, and uh, let's see how the fiberglass held up. I do have a war scar from etching away in this huge blister. Oh my goodness. if you can hear the difference. But this is solid. So all in all, I think the fiberglass job today was a success. I think it wasn't quite as efficient as it could have been. I could have used a little bit less glass. But overall, I'm ha really happy with it. Um, and we're really just waiting on the wood. It's proving kind of hard to get half inch marine grade plywood here. Uh, but tomorrow I'll be calling around and hopefully we can get some tomorrow and put it back together tomorrow because this is just the first step, the first section of the decks. We need quite a bit. We're doing a, like a big deck replacement. I, I don't have it fully calculated right now, um, but uh, I mean, how much do you, do you think you have? Just been calling, trying to find like plywood and we have the three quarters inch marine plywood is a lot of different places. Uh, notably, like Home Depot has it. But we measured our decks to be half inch. So we did half inch plywood, right? I've called maybe about, I don't know, seven or eight places so far. And I just found the first place that has it. Uh, they're in Baltimore, which is about three hours away, which, you know, not the biggest deal. But they sell a four by eight sheet for $136. 
so it's pretty expensive and now we have to see how much we need if we need a whole unit it would be you know it might even be more per sheet if we don't buy the whole unit but if we need the whole unit there's 60 sheets in a unit so we're talking about eight grand of wood <laughs> which i really there's no way we need eight grand worth of wood um but we need to calculate how much for how much square footage we have on the boat to replace so a little curveball now that i've officially like getting gotten rid of all the rotten wood in our deck in the area that we removed uh, Jen remeasured it and some areas are look like they could be three-quarter and some areas are a half so nothing's just straightforward like always so now I am measuring the width and length of all of the different aspects and parts of the boat and writing it down so that way we can calculate how much wood we need to get plus we'll obviously get some extra just in case for mistakes because they will happen so time to measure what we're gonna do is we're gonna get one sheet of three uh, three quarter inch marine plywood because that's easily available it's actually quite a bit cheaper than the half inch oddly enough um, because it's more available and we're gonna see if that works before we buy all of it <laughs> To me, uh, as a software engineer, these uh, skills for measuring and construction are not really what I was trained on. But Jennifer, being trained in architecture, modeling, and drawing plans, you know, she's an expert. Maybe not on boats, but hey, you know, time to do something new, right? Small change of plans for the better. We just remembered that SV Ecola, Andy and Gwyn had given us a small section of three quarter inch marine plywood for a different project a few months ago. Um, so we're just gonna use that and see if that fits. So that way we don't have to buy a whole sheet and possibly have some excess. Um, we did all the calculations, so we're gonna need about five sheets. You know, that's right now, we'll see with all the curves and all the, all the pieces if we need more, but it's a starting point. We're gonna use the top layer of fiberglass as a template, so that way we have the, like the exact measurements of what we took out, and that way hopefully it'll fit back, just like a puzzle piece, into the spot. That's a theory anyway. We'll see if it actually works. Oh. Well. That seemed like a success. Now we need to see if it fits. And uh, hopefully it fits. And then we're gonna like, you know, we want it to be as exact as possible fitting so that way our filler doesn't have to be as much. Um, and so, nice, first thing that might have worked. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see how our uh, three quarter inch fits. Ollie just loves testing the strength of the fiberglass. Can you move? Thanks, girl. Oh. All right. Well, it fits. There's some gaps on the end, but it looks a little high. Yeah, there's just, uh, it's just way, it's just too high. You know, this is supposed to sit in level and it looks like that is not how it is. So our scrap piece of plywood Yep. has proven to us that we need half inch. Yep, so we're gonna buy maybe a sheet, maybe a few sheets of half inch. I just wanna, we're trying to balance the fact that we don't wanna keep making trips out to the place to buy it because right now the only place that sells it is three hours away. Um, so we don't have to go back every week. But we also don't wanna buy a ton of plywood if we're, you know, if it's the wrong size, but I don't see how it could be the wrong size, right? Anyway, that's where we are, and now the next step is going to be to find the half inch plywood. Oh, a short day trip to Annapolis, and we have wood and a puppy. 
So now it's time for us to cut the wood so that way we'll have more manageable pieces because right now a four foot by eight foot sheet won't fit in the boat or our car or anything like that. So cutting. Since right now our method is letting the cut wood crash, we figure it'd be better for it to crash in the grass. Maybe it won't dent as much or clang as much. So we're moving the, moving the whole operation. Our final cut for today is to recut the piece that we cut that was three quarters inch plywood now that we have half inch, we're gonna, just going to do that same cut again so we can finish our one section. Like it's working on the wood, but everywhere else you can get an epoxy. I'm getting epoxy. I don't want to get epoxy too. It's gonna be what if you held it the opposite height so it's like actually low? That was a great idea. It's a great idea. I mean, that's. I wish I great. I wish I was just doing that. That's why you keep me around. Yeah, I know. All right, now for the last spot, that's epoxy. We are adding colloidal silica, which is a filler. We spread this out. And I might need to open up my next thing of epoxy. This is a complete learning experiment, so mistakes are expected to be made. <laughs> Looks like we have all these sections. Enough of thickened epoxy in here. It's time for the final step. Pushes are reattaching and weighting it down. Let's do it. You ready? Let's do it. Well. This is our first time, as you guys are very well aware of. I'm sure you'll have tons of tips and things uh, that we're doing wrong in the comments. But we have about 30 pounds of weights and it just doesn't really feel like enough, like keeping all of this whole mixture together and making sure it has a good bond. So I'm also standing on it. Welcome back. It is the following morning for us. It's a little bit windy today, so hopefully that doesn't carry around in the mic too much. But we have some foul weather coming tomorrow, so we're gonna try to finish this one section today. We have enough, it's warm enough, so it should work out. Now today we are basically gonna be grinding away the edges um, where the like layer of fiberglass is and then the existing section of our deck. So that way we will join them with new pieces of fiberglass. So we'll be using the grinder a lot, and hopefully, um, you know, we don't notice any cracks. We can kind of grind it out and, and, you know, really join this the correct way with fiberglass. 
I already started today and did half of one side so you can kind of see this is where the line is. And so I need to grind this down a little bit more but then we're gonna be laying fiberglass here and then we'll make it uh, all level in a later step at the end of the whole project. We moved inside to kind of give you guys an update because it's kind of windy outside and all of the grinding is done. It was interesting because on one of the sides we could see the wood coming through which means that the fiberglass wasn't that thick there. It's just something to note and my strategy was kind of to taper off the grinds so that way the middle section like the section where the two pieces are joined is the lowest section. So it should be like this as much as possible, but it, it was really hard to get that with the grinder, not gonna lie. Um, so I just did my best. And now we have the fiberglass cut, so it's time to join the section we cut out with the deck. Now one of the things we're trying differently today compared to yesterday is we're going, we have like an epoxy station set up in our aft cabin, which is our workroom from our boat tour that you guys saw last video. And this way, hopefully the epoxy mixture won't kind of drip all over the place because we had that problem before. Now we might still need to cover our steps, but at least here we have some cardboard, not any winds, and we can just have it set up, um, which will hopefully help us. I tried to cut one inch, but I think when, it, when it's kind of small, it's hard to do it. Uh -huh. But we'll just see, you know, it's an experiment. Okay. That's good. I made too much epoxy in that pot, so by the time I got to this other side, it's already congealing. So I'm just gonna roll out the, the starboard side and then finish that side, and then I'm gonna make a new pot for the port side. It's just things to know for next time. I'd much rather waste these plastic buckets and paint brushes rather than do something really poor to the, to the deck. Um, which will take a lot of labor and, and time to get off. So now it's time to ma mix the second batch of epoxy. I'm gonna do a lot less. I did 15 pumps for that one. Well, uh, well, I tried to do both. So I think maybe I'll just do about five pumps and we'll see how it goes. See if that's enough. One, seven. I don't know if we ever explained, but we're using epoxy, uh, that's the West Systems uh, epoxy brand. And we have the epoxy pumps, which we used, I think when we were first putting the boat into the water. Um, and now we just got the bigger ones for the bigger gallons of epoxy. Looks like a snake. <laughs> It does. Are you having fun? Are you having fun yet? Is that a song? Yeah, this is so much fun. <laughs> actually, no, this is, it is, it is fun. Because you, you get to actually, like, see the results of your action. Ollie, what are you doing out here? Get inside. <laughs> It's like that supervisor, the micromanager. Okay, the fibers are sufficiently soaked in here. Yeah, I'm gonna need to clean all this extra resin off. There you go, push it all the way down here. 
Oh yeah. What I'm doing here is the fin roller is for removing all of the air bubbles. Because those will not, like here's the air bubble right here. And there is no more air bubble. For sure I put too much resin on again. I need to keep it lighter, I think. Maybe five pumps for everything, or maybe even just like three pumps per side. Uh, because it just seems way oversaturated. And uh, I think, and then, because it's oversaturated, I feel like the fiberglass is kind of moving around a little bit more. It's not staying where it should. All right, with that, now that the wind's picking up a little bit more, we're gonna circle back later this afternoon after this has set up a little bit. That's one section done. Ooh. 59 more to go. <laughs> Woohoo! One of the main reasons why we are doing this deck project is because, well, it's all for me. Um, Ellie did not want to do it. I didn't want to do it either, but he is doing it for me because he loves me. Um, because I was getting really fed up with the ceilings of our boat, particularly in our bedrooms, leaking. And it would leak this gross brown liquid. And, um... So now we are finally at the stage where we are, we, Elliot, is above um, the V-birth. He's getting to, he's starting like the V-birth area. And so he's about to, I'll just let him explain. We have so many holes in here that I'm putting a trash bag and I'm clearing it off the bed so that way hopefully it doesn't make our entire bedroom a work area um, like it was last night when I came into bed and I had fiberglass <laughs> in your bed uh, well it's two months later and we have officially done 90% of the boat and we've saved the worst for last uh, I am literally in a new porthole uh, where we cut off this section now this whole section and kind of where we're going into the detail here this is going to be actually a video for anybody who it needs to do a deck core replacement. So we're gonna be sharing materials list, all of the different steps in nitty gritty detail, the reasons why we've done, and from what we've learned doing the whole deck in a different video, not on YouTube. So if you're interested in that product, uh, go to this link on our website and sign up to know when it's released. We'll see you guys next time. Our soft. Jen, can you pass me the multimeter? Again. It's a moisture meter, not a multimeter. Oh, what <laughs> Just be careful of your hands with the saw. Okay. So that obviously is not going to touch. So. Can you just turn, take the battery off so that way I know that you're not going to like accidentally. Well, there is like a safety button. Okay. Just in case. 